and you can Hello. go off and we'll come back and do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're live. Hello. We are the Mad Scientists. I am Mad Frankie. This is Violet Igor. There she is. Over Everyone. there. And then we'll do this. Yay. Okay. So, Brian's, Brian's right. off looking for a tool, so if she puts me on camera. There we go. Okay. Anyway. Then I can show you um, in response. Um, Paula, yes, that's the book she's talking about. So while she's go looking for something, I'm going to tell you what I've been doing. I've just been fussing around and playing here. Can you see my drawings here? Um, this was an idea for some stencils. What I'm doing is I'm going to create a new little folio and I have the pieces cut out um, for the book. This is going to be the main folio and this is going to be a little insert and there'll be more but i wanted to cover the blank areas and i wanted to use gel prints but i wanted to um take those gel prints and draw on them and i wanted to do zen tangle type stuff so this is just practice these are just what i had in mind to put over the gel print so what happened here is I drew all this out with uh, lightly with a pencil. Then I went over it with a black marker. Then I went over it with watercolor to see how that black marker would hold up. And it it um, bled. So obviously that marker is not going to stay in my process. So then I went over it and did watercolor. And this is just copy paper. So watercolor. And now I've just been zentangling different things. And ah, bit fuzzy. Oh, um, but anyway, I'll come back. I'll add to this. Right, Streamyard caps us at seven twenty. Right, but I don't like that it's fuzzy. So anyway, I'm just um, doodling, zentangling, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and the idea for doing it this way came from Ann Lar. I watched Ann Lar the others. Uh, the other morning and she was well anyway she referred to doing zen tangles and possible and that and i went oh light bulb came on so i have a box of bar bowen's mandala madness um inspiration cards mm -hmm. and there's all kinds of beautiful little drawings doodles whatever you want it on mandalas that she does and so it's been inspiring me. You can look on the back and you can see um, ways that she's done it, how to do it. So that's what's been inspiring me. Ann and Barb. Ann Lar, Barb Owens. And I, at the moment, I can't remember where I got the idea for this particular uh, template. So that's what I'm doing. That's where I'm at, among other things that I'm doing. That's what she said. I'm just sure. giving him and, and and Fran is did her best to be 100% all together and ready to go, but there's a tool or something that she's looking for that she can't find. It's all right. I can do without it. I just thought I'd have a brief look, but the dog yeah. now wants his feet, so uh, <laughs> I'm just classifying a dog. Yeah, it's what happens when your craft room has to get disrupted again. Yeah. Well, way. let's see. Let's um. Shall we go over and uh, shall I start off? Yes. Why don't you take me off screen completely, put you on there completely, and go ahead and begin. Okay. Have you finished that now? Is your last one? That's it. I have. Um, off you go. go Right, Liz. I was doing it my way, which is trial and error and make a mess. <laughs> I well, that's my way. Was was doing. Exactly what I want to talk about now. Exactly. So, that's what I said. That I was an example of that. So, and just so you know, I've already typed into chat the name of these books and who they're by. If you wanted to show the covers anyway, that's up to you. Um, right. Meaning and method is what I said, isn't it? Yep, method and meaning, meaning and method, and where our inspiration comes from, and yeah. Well, um, the number of times um, 
I look at something that I'm doing and I've got no idea what the meaning is until I'm sort of about three quarters to nearly finished through doing it. And then I start to have some ideas as to what's what it's about. Because it's partly what's in your head and what you get out and partly what you've got available and what you decide to put together. And then something starts to say, take shape in your head as well as on the page. So it's like you're you're doing something in your head at the same time as you're getting stuff out onto the page, the canvas, the 3D piece you're doing, whatever it happens to be. And... Um, I, I mentioned about um, <clears throat> whether you should go and do a workshop, do loads of research, or whether you should just plunge in and play. Well, the great thing about a lot of art is that it is available to play. But there are some fantastic workshops, and you can do courses, and there are books that can help you out with things as well. So really, I think I, I found when I was younger – and I wanted to do something, and I asked about it on forums. The number of people on those forums that would say, oh, well, it's going to take years before you've got anything good. You need to learn how to do it. You need to take classes to find out about it. It's so frustrating when people say that. It's like, it's like you know, why are you bothering, you know? If you haven't put in years and years of uh, solid research and foundation, there's no point in your bothering. That's what it sounds like to me. And I do not agree in a big way. I think that really the best thing you can do is to play with something. If you don't like the feel of clay, it's absolutely no good. You're doing a course for six years only to find that out when they finally let you have a bit of clay in your hand. Do you? I mean, that's an exaggeration. But you see what I mean, don't you? It's just so much better, I think, to get a feel for what you can do with something, a feel for what it feels like, what your results are like, whether you enjoy the process. If you enjoy the process, it doesn't matter half as much what you're going to get at the end because you're having fun while you're doing it. And I think having fun while you're doing it is a big part of art. I really do. I mean, say, look at this book. I mean, looking through this book, this is the um, Printmaking and Mixed Media by Dorit Elisha, right? And I was looking through it, and it's all fascinating. There's some lovely things in here, some nice stuff, and, and you go, you know, this is the section on Colograph printing. It has lots of sections on different types of printing, including screen printing and um, what else has it got in here? The Tortilla Curtain Project. That was quite fascinating. It's got a lot in it. But the thing that really attracted my eye was this. Let me show you. See? It's very much my kind of thing. I like that kind of abstract where there are shapes and uh, textures. And that creates something else. This was by Julie Snydel, and she, I said Snydel or Snydel, I can't remember how, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I found her online. She is doing a lot in encaustic art at the moment, and it's really very good, and I couldn't find anything else like that, but this is definitely the kind of thing that attracts my eye. What it is, is it says it was created from a mix of tag board cutouts dried glue dots and other textural pieces, which is not greatly helpful in explaining because I, I wasn't sure until Violet told me what a tag board cutout was and other textural pieces is somewhat vague. But you can see that there's been a circle put down somewhere and then another circle on top of it and you've got shadow around the edge there. So you can see that, can't you? And you can see that there has been something used that had some sort of hashy pattern there. And you've got something with dots here, haven't you? So you can see that there are all these different shapes going on down there and creating an, a uniform end product with all this different texture. I've got a feeling that that might be the actual colograph and this is the print from it. I don't think it's the other way around because it does look so much like a print. 
but there you go that's that's the kind of thing that really interests me that kind of um non <clears throat> non natural i mean i like nature uh, that's another area but i like this non natural sort of industrial look i really do like that So that's that one that I wanted to mention. Now, I've got this book on colographs, which I'm going to look into. I haven't looked into that half as much. <clears throat> but uh, there's some lovely things in here as well. Look at that. That is done with etching. How on earth somebody etched all that? I have no idea. I love those, those squares and um, juxtaposition of shapes. I mean, some of it is quite landscapey. And some of it is quite sort of regular. And then you've got irregular things here, rather like an old piece of paper. But it is said to be all done with etching, because here's the, the pieces here. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Getting wound up. <laughs> Fran, so what, is, what is the name of this book? What is this one? It's it. oh, Colograph. Okay. Printmaking Handbook, Colographs and Mixed Media Printmaking. It's by Brenda Hartill and Richard Clark. Okay, got it. Okay, and it's got this sort of scenery thing on the front. Yeah. Kind of what it looks like. Oh, it looks like a tree in a landscape. That's what it looks like. Very don't know what it is, but um, no doubt there's some explanation in the book. As I say, I haven't looked in depth at this, but there's some gorgeous things. Absolutely gorgeous. And look at the textures in that one. Wonderful things. <clears throat> right, so that's a nice one. And another one I'm absolutely loving is this one. It's called Sculpting in Copper, as you can see, <clears throat> by Jim Pratt and Sue White Oaks. Jim Pratt is the photographer, Sue White Oaks is the sculptor. And it is lovely. She's made all these gorgeous things in here. That fish is excellent. And look at that. That lovely dragonfly. All made out of copper. And look at that. Ooh. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Well, I love the I love the one on the cover. It's an owl. Yep, there's the owl. Oh wow. You see what size it is compared to Sue. Wonderful. This lion's head is a piece that was made from a copper sheet beaten into shape over a bitumen former um, and it's 4,500 years old. It was made in southern Iraq. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> the thing is that they're saying here, funny, copper is stable. It will not rust and once patinated, it is very resistant to discoloration and corrosion. Some of the earliest surviving metal figurative art is in copper from the Middle East. This it's 20 centimetres, that head of, an, head of a lion. Fabulous. So what else have we got? She, there she is in a market looking at, uh, showing them her, uh, some of her yeah. work. And, there we go. <clears throat> showing them some of her work in a little book. And they're, they're one of the street workers uh, raising a, a bowl using a wooden mallet and a raising hammer there. <clears throat> Look at that. Wouldn't you love to find that lot? <laughs> uh, found um, at a scrapyard, I believe. Lovely. And you can take a hot water tank and uh, turn it into sheets of copper. Lovely. It says here, where's a bit that she said that she's um, uh, do, 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 copper scrap. There's a bit about... Uh, cutting that well she said something i can't remember exactly what she said it's in here somewhere <clears throat> you cut the, the, the copper tank into sheets using a nibbler and then you throw away the top and the bottom and i'm going throw away no wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute i'm sure you can use it for something well, let, let me let me tell you uh, uh, a few well about a month or so ago russ and i went for a car ride out in the country here not far maybe a half hour away if that and there's a guy who on his property out in the woods, he does metal sculptures, whether it's copper or 
car parts or whatever. And I think I sent you some pictures with all the chipmunk. Yep. And and I knew you would love it. I mean, it's he has acreage. And it's along those lines. And when it says take it off and throw it away, you have to understand that throw it away does not mean to discard it, but he throws it into a heap. And uh, he, has, he has students that come in that he teaches to do this welding and cutting and all of that. And what they do is they get to go and they keep this pile of, of discards, whatever it is, and create something. Yeah. So even though they say throw away, I think that just means it goes over in that particular pile <laughs> for this okay. project. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, there's look at these lovely tools. Look at that. <laughs> Assemblage of old iron shows some of the pieces used by Sue White Oaks as anvils of the past 25 years. Wow, look at all those bendy bits of metal and the different shapes. God. I mean, you, you uh, wouldn't it be great to find somebody who's um, getting rid of all their tools? <laughs> Patricia is here, just so you know. She's listening. Um, and she says she's loving this review of books. Yeah, well, th this is what I was wanting to get to. Oh. Is it fabulous? That is just amazing. Just amazing. Now, I think that's made from two bowls. What you do is you raise it to make a, a shallow bowl dish shape, and one each side. And then it goes on from there. I think this one is actually in the book or one very like it. Or at least a basic, I mean, there's bowl. So there's how to make a bowl, just raising a bowl. And Paula says, remind me to tell Fran about the UK blacksmith artist, Bex Simons. Yep, seen them, seen her. She's brilliant, isn't she? Yeah, she's on, um, uh, been on um, Money for Nothing. I think she's brilliant. She always has great ideas. And you like the, the Scottish guy as well. Can't remember his name. But he does that um, that woolly cow with all those <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. I didn't think a cow could be woolly, but yeah. Can you can you zoom out a little bit? We're missing the either depending on how you hold it. Either there you go, either the top or the bottom of the book. Oh, look at I love leaves. That leaves. I now I've done a little bit on leaves with um, uh, some time ago, but I'd like to have another go at that. There was something on um. There's a, a, a jewelry workshop, I think, something like that, studio, something. I can't remember. But he's got this same guy doing the instruction all the time, and he shows how to put veining in a leaf and how to um, fold it. It's a fold art as well. Big Kev. Paula says Big Kev. Yes, that's the Scottish guy. Yes, yes. Big Kev. He's Look at that. Look at that. There's, there's how to do the dragonfly. So it's actually got instructions in here as well as just showing you all the marvellous things. It's also telling you how to make some of them. Brilliant. Abdomen. See, doing the abdomen. Lovely. Kevin Paxton. Thank That's you. That's him. Yep. Wings annealed by heating to an even cherry red. Lovely. Lovely. So there we are. There's the big... Um, look at it i like the annealing actually i mean they go they often go and pickle them afterwards and then um they get all cleaned up but i'm not sure i like the cleaned up version as much as i like the one with all the, the heat patina on it but i think the this one is where she's um cleaned it up and then put more heat patina on so that uh so that it's nice you know she's using a torch i can see the torch up yeah, in, yeah. Yeah, so you clean it first, then you put the heat patterner on, so you've got a nice patterner. Mm -hmm. Now, now that is not so easy to get to. Uh, I've had um, some tries with it, and sometimes you can get it, but if you then want to move on to the next piece and do the next part of one complete surface, um, you've got to be careful not to go back over the other bit you've done, because you can take it from beautiful purples and blues to black in quite quick succession. So you've got to be careful. Lovely. And there's the fish. There's the one she shows, the fish. So it's a simplified version of the one we saw before. I thought it was. 
and uh, she sh she shows how to do that as well. So you so you make a fish shape and then you smash it into shape with your well you've got to file the edges as well, but then you you bend it into shape. There we are, on a with a wooden mallet. So you're not uh, putting so much effort into it, and, and you've got a soft, like more gentle. Sorry, it looks like she's doing it just on a tree stump. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so she, make, she makes a bowl shape on the tree stump, so it becomes a former for things like that. Yeah. So it's very shallow, but it's it's good enough so that she can. I mean, I've got this one which um, I bought, but um, it's quite sh um, small, so it can only do small things. Right, so she's what she's got there is much bigger, and she can do a large bowl with that tree stump. But it's doing it in wood in the same way that this is. You see, we must do some more copper soon. I, I'm feeling the lack of copper. <laughs> Look at that! Isn't that marvelous? Look at the size of it. There she is, Sue White Oaks. Isn't that lovely? I love I that. Love I, just... I love it. Yeah. I love the pattern she's put into it, you know. And then there's the um, lips, We're putting in lips on a fish. Oh, geez. Like that, that, that give a, a finished product. Is that what she's making in the, in the like that. Pat picture? Is that what that, that is? One. Making of the That's lips? Lip. Yep. It's the lips. The mouth. They call it the mouth, but it's the lips. You know, fishes have lips. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the eyes. She's doing the eye, showing you how she's sort of um, shaping it. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. Anyway, that's that's a fabulous, fabulous book, and you end up with this gorgeous thing. Well, I've Isn't just. I've been cutting out uh, soda cans. I've been cutting them up for the little tin, and I've been pounding and, and drawing on that. And it isn't easy, not with my hands. So I can't even imagine the the aggression you must have to pound. Oh, that's the about copper. If you keep it annealed, if you keep re-annealing it, it's really soft to work. It's so not so it, bad as other metals. It's much nicer. I can go I look up a kneel, but what is your description of heating it? Heating it. For what purpose? Because when, when you are making something out of copper, right, let me get my implement. When you are mash, hammering something in copper, like that, yeah, you are work hardening the copper. Where you smash it, you misalign the atoms of the copper. So you misalign the atoms and it becomes brittle and hard. When you heat it, the atoms all line up again and straighten out. But it doesn't the copper from being bent into the shape you put it in. So then you could have another go and bend it a bit more. It just makes it softer and more malleable and easier to move. Interesting. That's annealing. Thank you. I mean, I can do it with a little, you know, those little... Um, uh, torches you get for making creme brulee yes. yeah yes you can use them you don't need a bunsen burner or you, you not a bunsen burner you don't You're need one of those oxygen uh, oxyacetylene torches you don't need that an arc copper. welder but <laughs> that copper it's more accessible pardon what 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 well an arc welder is what comes to my mind we used to have an arc welder with the big helmet the big you had to yeah my my brother had one of them, yeah. You don't need that with copper. You probably just vaporize the copper if you do that. <laughs> no. And and Paula I says will, Paula says I think copper is one of the this. most beautiful metals in the world. It has quite a low annealing temp, two hundred yes. degrees. Oh. Yep. So that is my flower that I'm halfway through doing. So I will anneal that before I work any more on it. I've just got to figure out where the heck my um, torch has gone. Because until I find out, there's not a lot of annealing I can do. Yeah. I've got a couple of them. Ian's got one somewhere as well, but I don't really want to nick his. So did I've you use one. your block there to make the bowl of the flower? No, but I could do. 
but um, I, I could use it to make the bowl of the... Actually, what I use more than that is uh, a big soft pad made out of leather with sand in it. And I don't know where mine's gone. It's around here somewhere. But uh, we're not working on copper today, so I was just talking about it and right it looks you're right. taking the well, you were going to work with copper you were going to get your little uh fish and chips and not vinegar thing not out not and uh what i'm going to do this is a piece out of which from a main sheet of copper i cut two circles because i wanted to do something with the circles i can't remember what and this was a piece sitting there on the um edge of the sheet of copper and i thought you know that looks a lot like a pair of glasses so I um, cut it out, and then I hammered in different patterns. It's the uh, set I've got for um, the Zodiac. I hammered those into it. So I've got these nice patterns. Looks now like I'm thinking. To me. Huh? Looks like a pair of glasses to me. It Owl does, doesn't it? Owl so I'm now Owl. going to put it in here and see what we get. So will you add more vinegar? Yep, I'll add more vinegar. It's only down there. So what that is, if in case anybody's wondering, that just came in. This is from last week when she was she used some salt and vinegar potato chips and crushed them up and put them down in there with more salt and vinegar to create a patina. Patina. What we would call crisps. Yes. Here in the UK. But there we go. So where's my vinegar? It's just down here. There we are. I got this um, distilled malt vinegar because we don't really use it for anything else. He likes the brown malt vinegar on his fish and chips. There we go. Get in that. And some more salt because you always want a bit of seasoning. I don't think we'll bother with the pepper though. <laughs> And then okay. we'll just leave. And then uh, Elton John glasses. That's what Paula says. And let me see. Uh, Carla says, I spy Sculpey. Yep, Sculpey. That's what I wanted to have a go at. But I couldn't find the thing of me. The thing of me? Yeah, my little tool. My little tool. I'm just having a look in here in case it's been hiding in here all the time, You've which I really don't. Tools on your desk and you're looking I for a particular one. I can use other things. I've got lots of tools there. Yeah. Yes, oh, it's not in there either. It's my favorite tool. It's the one I can use um, without bothering with anything else at all. But there we go. It's not there. And I've been moving around the house, so goodness knows where the actual thing might be. So, in the meantime, let's see. I was going to show you how to make twisted faces. So, let's start with. Um, some so we're using sculpey not air dried clay hmm no this is the uh, sculpey super sculpey firm gray because it's the one that i happened to find you could use um air dry clay but it's a lot harder to do with air dry clay because while you're working on it it starts to dry yes yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah mm -hmm. so let's um mold this together to get some sort of ability to that's why I like my pasta maker. I can't do what you're doing. My hands will not do that. Yeah, I've got a pasta maker upstairs somewhere. Yep. <coughs> okay. You, I'm going to mute and go get some more coffee. You just, you, it's your turn. You entertain the masses, please. Okay. Well, let's use this because that will help me. This is very firm. It takes a fair bit of um, push to mold it into anything as you can see now the super sculpey the pink one beige they call it is um much more giving and i prefer using that <clears throat> as a molding medium um, as a modeling medium because of that but this is nice it holds its shape well so i'll take a piece off i think because i want a piece to your hand's warmth will help to amalgamate things. 
and make it more workable. The more you work it, the more it becomes workable, if you see what I mean. It, it gets warmer and more plastic. Let's roll this one out a bit. So, so we want some bits that are rolled out. <clears throat> we'll need some rolled out bits for a mouth. And for the eyelids. See, so it's starting to bend a bit better now. <clears throat> I'm going to fold it together again. And fold it together again. And roll it again. <clears throat> I do find that it's not the best idea <clears throat> to leave this sort of clay sitting on paper or card because the paper or card will uh, leach out the oils from the clay so that it can then become a bit more, a bit less malleable. <clears throat> of course, sometimes your clay is very malleable and you want to do that. So it's nice to have the option to be able to leach some of the oil out so that it's easier to use. Now that's very much more malleable now than it was. So we've got a piece of clay there. So let's continue on with this one. Oh, I can hear my hands cracking when I do that. So let's start with a, <clears throat> a round circular shape. Just this action of um, creating a ball is going to <clears throat> uh, make the clay a bit more, a bit softer. And we were going back to your theme for today, the method and meaning and where we get our inspiration. And then you were talking about watching I told you I thought I was a good example of what you were talking about, that I watched so many videos and read so many uh, websites, uh, blogs and whatever on certain things I wanted to do, but I wasn't doing them. I was researching and watching and learning until I put my, when it comes to the clay, until I put my hands on the clay and yes. started doing it, I had... I'm like, well, they don't tell you how hard it is to do that. And they don't tell you, can you paint it? And they don't tell you, can you put mica powder on it? And they don't tell you, can you stencil on it? Mariah mentioned that a few weeks ago about me stenciling on the uh, polymer clay. And that's a, a project in my Mar mind, Mariah. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, yeah, I studied and I researched and I did all of that. But until I got my hands in it, I didn't know was I going to like it or not. And the other thing is, if you see all that and think, oh, I want to try it, and then you go buy this, and you buy that, and you buy that other thing, and oh, they say you need this, so you buy all that, and then you finally sit down to do it, and you go, well, you know what, I don't really find all that much interested in it after all. Yeah, yeah, that is an expensive way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's why I say having a play with things is a blooming good idea. I agree. So you can also use this as a roller mm -hmm. to roll out your piece of clay. I rolled it, you can see that I rolled it like that so as to get a point, so as to get an egg point. So it looks more like an egg than a, a ball so that I can, can also use a bottle. Mm-hmm. I had to be careful. I did that one time, and the ink on the bottle came off on the clay. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, perhaps that's not such a good idea then. <laughs> well, so there is a face, sort of. Face head shape. And this is what I'm going to use 
to make various things. So first off. You know, now would be a good time to zoom in with the camera. Okay, will do. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 you didn't know. I'm just thinking now would be a good time to see those features better. One, that's too big. So I will cut that in half. You know, now I, I will make a dent uh, here. Hi, Susan. I even went and bought the clay extruder. Yeah, no, I like them, but they're a toy, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's they're hard really hard. necessary. Oh, you want your eyes about halfway down the head, right? Now, because we're making twisted faces, it doesn't matter if things are slightly out. And you know me, I like things that are out a bit, not quite central, not quite correct. So that's too big, but it's about the right width. So I will cut that in half. Have I got a better cutter than that? Hang on. There's a thing called a scalpel somewhere. Oh, I have, um, I have, I also bought the cutter, the slicer for the clay, and I have yeah. the straight, and I have the, the, the rigid, or not the rigid, the, uh, it looks like, uh, corrugated. Yep. Yeah. You get a straight one and a corrugated one. I don't know why well, I've never used the corrugated one. Oh, I have. I'm on. Um, I make little, like, um, flat back, like, well, like that head. I so the outline where you cut, it's kind of rigid looking instead of smooth. Mm -hmm. So there's two eyes. There we go. <clears throat> more or less. So to make it look more like an eye, I'll take another piece of this. Roll it again to get it nice and warm. And cut it in half, and then in half again. Well, I, I remember now, um, quite some time ago, you tried to teach me this, way back when we were doing the Egypt project, I think. Was it? Mm. it? It could be back then, but quite a while back. Um, and it just, I looked at that and went, now, I like it, but you do it. <laughs> I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to uh, mold and shape and carve a piece rather than build the pieces. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's perfectly possible as well. It's just the way I saw it done once, and I found it really easy to follow, yep. and I just kept doing that. Now, I've got uh, a set of small ones here of these things. Crinkle cut. That's it, Paula. A crinkle, crinkle cut. cut. A potato chip. A chip. Crinkle. Yeah. <laughs> Crinkle cut. That's I have the blade. It was right here. I don't see it now, but it was right here. The crinkle cut. So and there's one you can buy to like cut cucumbers in with like that crinkle cut edge. And I'm like, you know, you you have to learn like a garlic press. These are things you can use with the clay. So you can yep. use a garlic press. You can use a, a cucumber crinkle cut cutter. You, uh, you, these are everyday household things. You don't have to go buy all the tools flat. that they talk about. I squish this flat because I want it to be more of a a flat piece to come over the eye. Like that. Now I can just blend that in with the other piece. So that it becomes part of the face and not just a an add-on. Same with and this why one. Do you, why do you call it a twisty face? It will be eventually. It isn't yet. It's just a face. You could just stop at the just a face if you want to. Okay. Well, I'm just I have smoothing the marks I just made. Here, those, those ball end. Uh, tools that you have right there. I have a set of those. I really like them. So those are the two pieces from the other half of the same size circle. Same thing again. 
Yep, Diane, I that's how I got mine was um, Michael's or Hobby Lobby usually. Now these were bought on um, Amazon and they are sugar craft tools or icing. Same idea. People are just modeling, but they're using icing. Oh, yeah. I have a, a number of uh, um, molds that were for um, cake decorations, fondant. Yep. And I use them for my clay. I have one that's roses and angels and... Yep. Because I'm not as good as you at the twisty faces uh, or the or, or even the carving that I was talking about a minute ago. Turns out I'm not so good at it. Well, good intentions, but my hands won't do it. So what you do in here when you get a when you get a second is to pull that up and do a real good close up because what you're doing there is blending those eyes in so they don't look. Yep. Blending them in. You can see how it's proud of the clay there. Mm, let's see if I can get it a bit closer. Proud? It's it's just sitting on the clay. Oh, it's yes. Not part of it. yes. So I use this tool to just smooth it in. Now the tool that's missing is made of wood and it's it's a curved thing and I, I like it better because it's less I don't need to keep changing to another tool it's rather like this one but it's it's smaller and it's it's a, a slightly different form but uh, this is a um, dental tool yeah so you can use that as well so yeah if you go to your dentist office they a lot of times throw those tools away because it's time to get new sterilized ones you can go to your dentist and ask him, can I have your old tool? Is that they are very easy to sterilize. So the ones in this country, are, I've never found one that was given any away. Not yet. Bummer. I can't find a dentist now. I haven't had a dentist for years. There just aren't any. There we are. Well, so far, it looks like an alien that I sent you a picture of earlier. <laughs> well, what else is missing to turn it into a face? There's a few things. A, a mouth. mouth. A mouth. Ears. Eyebrows. Eyebrows. You don't need ears. You can have ears if you want them, but you don't actually need them. Eyebrows. Quite, you don't see people's ears. They're covered by hair. But you can have ears if you want them. But eyebrows, yes, eyebrows are a good one. That's uh, something you will want. Well, actually, if you think about it, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, your forehead, your eyes are kind of in, so you need a bit of a forehead and eyebrows over the eyes. Yeah, you do. You're quite right. There you go. Because you could have just molded that into position into the shape before you even started. Yeah. Is that just one eyebrow or are you just building up the forehead? Building up the forehead. Okay. <laughs> if it was a bit bigger, your fingers will be a much better tool than any of the rest yeah. of this. Yeah. But of course it is so and one of the tricks I learned, the Blue Bottle Tree on their website um, is. She's brilliant. She's brilliant. She absolutely is. So many wonderful tips from her. I've followed her for years. Uh, I can't think of her name right now. And I was just there looking. Um, anyway, um, if you were creating something that you were concerned about, fingertips, fingerprints showing up on your clay the way to eliminate them is a q-tip with a little bit of alcohol rubbed on it will help eliminate any um yep 
fingerprint marks like what you're putting on there. Now, if you don't care, then don't worry about it. But it's one way to move the clay. See, I see. Very cool. Now. Okay, now we're getting away from the space alien and getting into Neanderthal. Just a bit. <laughs> I'm pushing the two ends in here. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Pushing the two ends in from this flat piece to create more of an oval, like a, a half moon. So I'm I'm anti rolling it out, I'm rolling it in, see? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and then I can roll it out a little bit and then I can make a half moon shape. And the same with this one. And there's, right. there's your Brooke Shields eyebrows. <laughs> He's got big bushy eyebrows, this one. Yep. Diane Bell says, um, the new Prima molds are amazing. I love the pocket watches. So detailed. I'm experimenting with hot glue in them since I'm out of resin. Um, the other thing, other yeah. things you can use are like torn wet toilet paper or tissue paper torn wet tissue paper you can you can mush it up and um push it into the mold and let it dry i've done that and then um gently paint it or use markers on it i've done that i want one between them that's too big that's the trouble there's the that end there we go so i'm missing my good tool I'm I'm gonna try. Mariah says she really wants to see people use our stencils with the clays. Um, I'm gonna try. I have um, two ideas. One is to put to stencil on the clay to make a sheet and stencil on it um, to get the design on the clay, and then do cutouts. Like I could do beads, or I could do uh, pendants, or whatever. That's one way. But another way I was looking at was to do cut out using the stencils to create the cutouts. Oh, I yes, pressed into it as in a raised effect. Yeah. Um, that's what Mariah says, pressed into it. So I'm asking her as in a raised effect. And then where would you go from there? Well, pressed into it would create a uh, an indented form. Mm hmm. So there's um there's a beginning. Yes, raised. Yep. Let's do a mouth. <clears throat> so what I do with a mouth is I create a little ball. Well, and yeah, anyone else that, that has clay that wants to try it, another thing I thought of was with some of the designs, um I wanted to create the piece itself. So what would be a good one? Um, maybe uh, the Nautilus or um, just the shapes themselves would be a layer on top of something. So actually where you would stencil is where I would cut out. Almost like making the clay become the stencil. I don't know how to explain it, I think. Okay, Paula. Sounds good. Pictures. Pictures and video. There you go. Everybody's getting motivated. I love it. Look what you did, Fran. Mm. Paula's going to get her clay out. Anne's going to get her pasta maker out and try it. Uh, Carla says so she's going to try it. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, it's mixed media, right? Exactly. We are mixing up the media. Yep. Maker mm -hmm. is, is uh, mixed media. So clay is part of that. And let's see where we can go with the stuff. Oh, that's a happy face. Oh, look at that. So happy. That's the vermilion, that thingy right there. Is that what it's called? The dent in the middle of your lips. Not everybody has one. Mm. Well, it has a well-defined one. Okay, Laura Schaefer, Schaefer. Schaefer, I hope I didn't butcher that. But Laura, Laura says, now I understand why my monster eyes didn't look right. I need to smooth them into the face. Yes. Yeah, they are better put into a bigger indentation than I did there, actually. Right, that's the little... Because your, your eyes are set into holes in your skull, you see? Yep, <clears throat> you made a that's bit of cavity. Oh, not like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm a bit close there. It's uh, out of focus. So there is my weird person. He hasn't got a nose yet. And he I'm thinking like that. He has a straw in his mouth. There's more you can do. You need cheeks and oh, lots more you can do. But I'll tell you what will make him look better. And that is a nose. Yeah. I'm put now. That's what's missing. Nostrils. <clears throat> now, I will probably fiddle with him for quite a while. Paula says her oven, her cost clay is oven curing. Uh-huh. Okay, Mariah. Oh, okay. On a plane? Oh, on the phone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Read that for a moment. We call it a Cupid's bow. Oh, that thing in the, the middle of the lip. Yeah. Well, that's me from medical training is... Knowing what that's called. So, yeah, you need to, for the eyes, you need to, yeah, you were off screen. You need to have a little little bit of a cavity in there and set the eyes down in there and then build the yeah. eyelids up around it. That was the one thing, the main thing you taught me back when you did this for me months ago, long time ago. Well, yeah. I did push in with, the, um, with this, but you could do with doing a bigger cavity. Then I put it in, in that, that one. <clears throat> and I have a trick for curing mine. For cooking mine is I have these two ceramic tiles. So I have two ceramic tiles to play with. And what I do is I have um, two aluminum um, tinfoil cook, cooking pans. And they are the square ones. So I think they're like eight inches by eight inches. And I put the tile down in the bottom of one and put my um, clay piece, as long as it's small enough, any clay piece I'm making, I put down on the tile. And you can put a piece of parchment paper down on top of that if you don't, if you're concerned about the back of your piece being shiny. And then I put the other foil pan on top and I clip it close. Yeah, because that evens out the um the um cooking so you don't get any temperature spikes well the burning. other reason i do that because if they're because i'm using my red regular kitchen oven my you know i don't have a special toaster oven or anything like that to cure my to cook my clay so i'm using my everyday cooking oven and if there's any fumes or anything like that that's going to come off the clay it's contained within that aluminum uh, box that I've created. Yep. And I use the, the bulldog clamps or whatever they're called to uh, clamp the lid to the, the top to the bottom so that it stays closed. Yep. 
It's what I do. Exactly what I do. Well, and I used to have a sun con your Diane. So yeah, that was always my thought. So that's a pretty basic head. I mean, that is, I would work on something like that for a long time. But if you want a twisted face, what you do. Oh, I see what you're doing. You just twist it. You distort it slightly so you've got a twisted face. Well, I like that even better. So cool. There you go. Now, you can work on it a lot more, or you can just do it like that. I mean, the guy's had a bit of an accident, so that's why he's <laughs> twisted. <laughs> so that's a simple way to make a face. Now, I would probably go ahead and smooth this down a lot more to make it much less prominent. I would put cheeks there to build up his cheeks. But it's too late now. I've twisted it. So there you go. <laughs> All done. There's one for the oven. Very cool. Very cool. Back in there. That's a really quick one. I mean, I, I've worked on some faces a lot longer than that. So, and I mean, that's pretty much how I made my turtles. Same idea. You start with one thing and you, you put bits on and smooth them in place. And you can use, there's um, Sculpey liquid you can use. Yes. Liquid I clay. Between yeah. the ones. To make sure that it joins on nice and firmly. Hold, hold that, the turtle up to the camera so we can, yeah, so we can all admire it. I like him. He's so cute. He's one of the same lot of turtles. I made about five or six at one time, and one of them is the one that um, Patricia now has. Oh, that's where it went. Different shells with slightly different patterns on them. And here's another trick, looking at your turtle. If you get a lot of fingerprints or you just can't get your project to be smooth where you want it to be, take a look at it and go, well, can I just, if I can't get it to smooth, why don't I make it bumpy and, and yeah. like yeah. that turtle? So take a toothbrush and just pounce down on it to make the indents. You're off screen. Well, I used this uh, for this. Now, what did I use for this? Um, I used a piece of uh, copper piping to create these large areas, hollow copper piping, and it was slightly squashed, and I used that to create those marks um, going around the turtle. Two different sizes. You can see that this one yeah. is bigger than these ones. And then I had a, um, a much smaller one that I used to create the little tiny specks all over him and you can see that there's another another size of copper pipe that's made some indents there. They're almost like sort of scales or shell marks, you know? It was oh, fun. It was fun doing that. So that's that. Okay. So that's as much as I'm going to do with that. Diane so, said, I did enjoy making the funky mushrooms with the curly tops out of clay. Diane, you know, one of the things that I made was out of polymer clay. I love, y'all are enjoying the bugs and the beetles and all of that on, on the PM Artist Studio stencils. I love those. Um, but I'm a ladybug. I love ladybugs. And uh -huh. well, so I, I did. One. one of mine is, is a, a ladybug with a slightly different pattern. Sorry. Yeah, I made I made a I made a mass of ladybugs out of polymer clay, and they were I mean they were. Did so you put them in small. your garden? They were, stone? they were smaller. They were probably no bigger than your your pinky fingernail. I mean, they were probably oh, that. Right. And I like to to make them and then glue them on. Um, oh, I love ladybugs. I would glue them on. Uh, some of my ATC cards that I would make and my other artwork. Yeah. Uh -huh. I love ladybugs. There's a, there's a line in, uh, um, under the Tuscan sun is a, is a movie I like with Diane, um, Lane and she, she can't find anybody. There's no one. She can't find a boyfriend, blah, 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 blah. So her friend tells her about how she went out into a field 
she was always looking for a boyfriend or someone to be with romantically. And her friend says, you know, she says, I used to do that. And then one day I was, she was looking for ladybugs. She says, I never saw one. I never found one. So one day I just was out in the field looking and I just gave up and I just laid down and I fell asleep. And when I woke up, I was covered in ladybugs. <laughs> So sometimes when you're not looking, and there's more to that story, but I'll leave it. Y'all have to go yeah. watch it because she gets excited when she finds her ladybug. But I've always loved ladybugs. They're so cute. Okay, so um, get rid of these at the moment. I mean, I can't remember where I got them out. I was just searching for something, and I got some nice... Uh, there's the mummy, and then it's the sarcophagus. So that was quite on, good. On your table there, you yeah. have those out, and I wanted to ask you, what, what are those? Are those new, too? These? Yeah. These are not that new. They're um, for copper. <clears throat> they are uh, punches, and these are the designs that they have. Uh, I have. Ooh, I like designs. Yeah. Yep, yeah, nice. Create some nice textures with those. That's what they are. And this one is also a punch for copper, but I use it more. Um, it's it's more decorative than the others. I just like it. Dandelion it is. Mm-hmm. I like that one. So let's have a uh, that's a, a bosun's whistle. Yeah, that's okay. You, you, yeah, I'll take your word for it. Great many <laughs> speakers. So, this, um, this is. Let's talk about this for a minute. Okay. This is a dragon that I drew a long time ago, and I'm thinking to work on that while I can't get at my printer and and my silhouette until we've got that room sorted. And um, see if I can't make something that perhaps um, could be turned into a stencil. It's quite a nice shape. What do you think? I like, like it. Yeah, I like it. Uh, okay, now so, that's how you do that. Okay. Yeah, so this. Now, this was broken here. It's made of air dry clay. And it got broken there. Well, that piece was sort of bound to break. It was poking out. And then I dropped it on the floor and broke all that lot off. Aww. And I'm thinking, I've got to stick that back together. But then I got to thinking. And actually, I'm not going to stick it back together. What I'm going to do is use it as it is. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... If I can. Yeah, now you can't. Drop it. When you want to pick it. Well, there we go. Ooh. There we go. Oh. So now I've got a broken piece. I think that's lovely. I'm going to use that as the um, main piece of a piece of artwork now. So when you break something, you don't necessarily have to fix it. I will do something with these edges, make them look old. As it was broken a long time ago. Not just now. <laughs> but uh, there you go. You know, I mean, I can turn it into a lovely artwork. And yet it's a broken piece. And in fact, I think I'm going to get more enjoyment out of doing that than I would have if I'd left it a hole like these ones. Maybe I can use these with it. But it'll be interesting. So Diane says, or Carla says her best friend, Laura, works, and Laura's here. Um, she uses leather punches, too. Is Laura a part of Makers? I'm going to put the link in for Makers. And if Laura or anyone else is not a part of Makers, you need to join Makers and do some show and tell. We love that. That would be wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And PM Artist <laughs> Studio is Mariah and Patricia, and they love it, too. So... If you're not uh, over there, go join Facebook Makers Group and show us your goodies. 
Oh, yes. What are the questions? Oh, yes. Please answer the questions to get in. Yes, absolutely. Or Mariah won't let you in. You have to find the questions. We just want to make sure that you're actually an artist who's going to take part yeah. rather than. Oh, not like me. I, I don't get enough time to post pictures and all of that, but I'm there. I'm, I'm Mariah's really good to me. But yeah, we like participation and, and uh, uh, show and tell. Yeah. So I think I will do some brown prints now. Now I did some before, but they weren't finished. They weren't quite what I wanted. I'm going to do a little bit more to this because there's a little more to do to it. Now, what I was going to do was find the nest. <laughs> I took the nest off. Where did I put it? Hello, nest. Nest. You remember the nest, don't you? Yeah, uh, but I'm not going to tell you. It Mariah can say it. I'll leave it to her. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. You say it. There it is. Not no, there. and Diane Anne says, Diane, maybe we should start a support group for our families that will have to deal with all of our supplies. Well, here's <laughs> the way I think about it. Take a look at them and see what they've got and what they're dealing, what we have to deal with from them. So it works both ways. Now, so here's my nest. Yeah, yeah and that was the pilot's idea. Yeah, you're off screen a little bit. Let's get you focused My, back, everybody. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Let's go. You've got, you've got the golden eggs. There we are. The um, copper eggs have all been colored with copper. Copper eggs, sorry. There you go. And uh, I've put some beads on the nest. Oh, you did? Look at you. Little bits of water. You know, that's my idea. Little bits of water. So I want to secure it to this, right? Yeah. And I think oh. it's quite So glue is not going to help a lot, is it? Well, let's back up a minute. Let, let's hold the phone there, lady. Let's back what? up. You've added some elements that we missed, as in you glued down the dandelion tufts or the seeds. I would yep. not dandelion. Um, the cardoom. Um, the um the feathers. You painted oh, the good. feathers. You've now glued them on. Yep. Um those and look like on. They, they look like eucalyptus coins off a eucalyptus plant. What are they? They're moon pennies from honesty. Oh, okay. Yes, you did say that. Yeah. Yep. So we want to put this on. So the idea is to put it on with some wire to thread wire through and around and secure it at the back. Okay. That's my idea. Okay. But what I'm also thinking, which may be a bad idea, and I might not be able to do it right now because I've got no idea where my uh, punch is, my, uh, what do you call it, crocodile punch and eyelet setter. I shall have to go and hunt for that. That will probably take me about three days. So I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll put a couple of eyelets on, maybe four, maybe three, and then thread the copper wire through that. Now, I've got copper wire here, and I wondered if you'd like to see what I've got. Mm -hmm. Just got copper wire, copper coloured. I've got all sorts of copper wire. Funny, years and years and years ago, before I met Russ, I worked in a small factory and we built transformers, electrical transformers. So there were giant spools of different size and different colored wires in the storage area. And thinking back now, I'm like, oh man, why didn't I beg my boss to give me the scraps? <laughs> Yeah, well, you don't know, do you, until you're no. interested. It was a different lifetime for me. It was a different lifestyle. Yeah. Well, there we are. These are the different copper wires I've got. I'm thinking a fairly thin one, so I'm going to discard that one. And that one is um, <clears throat> the wire that this was made from, and I think it's too big. That's way too big. <clears throat> <coughs> so we left with these. What do you think? Should we go for colored or should we go for copper? 
copper. You think copper? Yeah, I'm well only because the, only because and here's why. One, I love copper. I love when you play with copper. But two, you have your color on there. Yes, true. So either either the blue to match your blue sea urchins and triangles or I mean diamonds or the red up above to go with the palette the substrate yeah but i really like the copper yes i like the copper yeah see i like the color that it yeah yeah i like that copper i think <clears throat> i haven't got anything thinner I'm just, I have got some thinner somewhere, I'm sure. Really thin copper, like this one. This one's so thin. Yeah, if I used that, you wouldn't really see it. No, and but I think that's a good idea. Manipulate it. You need to be able to manipulate it in and out without tearing your substrate, without tearing your canvas or having. That's the what the eyelets are for. Okay. That's what I'm going to use the eyelets for. So well, I will. Yeah, now hang on a minute, because this is um, bent over a wooden former. Yep. It came like yep. that, it's canvas. So I don't think I can use my uh, cropper dial on that. It's not going to be possible. So I, if I'm going to set eyelets at all, I'm going to have to use a hammer and some sort of substrate, um, something to hammer it onto, like... An awl? Do you have an awl? Yes, I have an awl. But I'm thinking something like that. Well, just a nail would turn. You'd have to turn it over and poke it in from the back side, so, so that it doesn't. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. The all is not nothing to do with it. Well, Mariah has a suggestion. Are you willing to put the nest over the diamonds? Not really. Why? Just, she, it's just her, her question. Are you willing to put the nest over the diamonds? I, I, well, I think that, and then you do that, and then you put the eggs in, you, then you've lost your diamonds. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. No. Yeah. Well, I like it there. <clears throat> and I'm thinking that I might go with this, I think. Because it's very thin. It's thinner than the copper, quite a lot thinner than the copper. And it will it will disappear. So you won't really see it, not with the eggs on top. So I think that might be a good idea. Okay. Well, well I, I think what Mariah was getting at is like the sea urchins were really right in your face. And when you put the, the, uh, the um, money penny on there, and the feathers on there, you really brought them back a little bit. Really nice. Yeah. So now mm -hmm. the diamonds are in bold. Your face. They're really bold. So by putting the nest or something over it, you'll... <laughs> Maybe not. <clears throat> something. Maybe not that. the nest, but something to... Or go ahead and get more feathers. Go ahead and use what you've already got. Don't add more elements. Just use the elements you've got. You've got more of those little coins or or feathers. Will that help? This lovely moon penny. <clears throat> That's what it was. Can you see what a gorgeous texture is on there? Yeah. It's lovely. I was thinking I might put that on. Well, what do you think? Now, that, that helps. So you still got your blue. But again, it's not bold in your face and distracting from the entire piece. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And being a moon penny, it's it's leading the eye around the moon exactly. penny. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how the yellow isn't popping out so much as I had expected it would before I started. It does to me, but we I mentioned that last time and, and you chose to leave it as is. I don't know. Do you have any other feathers? Maybe the moon penny, maybe the feathers. I'm kind of looking at the feathers. Over the... I don't want to completely obliterate it. I don't like that. No, I don't like that. Uh, what How about... about 
some seeds. Oh. Some of the honesty seeds. On the where? On the yellow or the blue? On the yellow. Oh. Oh, now you're toning it back a bit. Oh, interesting. Just drop it on there. You don't have any... Oh, good idea. Um, um, Paula says copper. Do you have any little copper flakes? Copper flakes. I do, actually, but not with me. I'll have to go and divvy in a big pot, a big... Um, Really useful box to find the pot of them. Think of this. Instead of the moon penny on the triangle, how about some scattered copper flakes? That might bring the, the triangles to the fore a bit. But, yeah, I can always try it. You don't have to stick them down until you know. Yeah, exactly. It looks oh. like raisins. The seeds look like raisins. <laughs> they do a bit, don't they? Yeah, yeah. They do. I'm, I'm hungry. I'm not sure about them. <laughs> Not completely convinced by them. Neither am I. They make me hungry. But I, <laughs> I like I do like the placement of the nest. I, I, I do like that. And I like the idea of the thinner wire so that you don't because it's gonna be lost. Yeah. In the commissariate community, Mariah says I would like to be in the commissariate community. What's that? Hmm. Oh, Carla says, Diane, my daughter should meet your daughter and Susan. Our husbands should commiserate. They can all join Anne's support group. Well, it's, oh. <laughs> it goes back to it goes back to all the stuff we have and stashed where it's stashed. And Mariah talking about yes, that's how P is. Um, yep. Hey, it, you um, never know what you might need. You can't sort of throw something away when you might need it. You really yeah, can't. you can't. It's her saying, what can I say? You can't throw it away till you save it first. Yeah. So I'm going to put these back on the shelf, and I will do those when I've got um, – I'm, I'm going to have to do quite a lot of hunting for that because I haven't got um, anything. Oh, look, there's the little copper wire. I thought I had thinner. There you go. But and I think that might be a bit bright. I think I'd rather go for the purple anyway. Yes, I think so. And, and, and here's where I want to invite Paula to come visit. She says, I live in a small apartment. I do all my makes on my kitchen draining board. Oh. Oh. Well, come as long as you can. We have a spare you enjoy what you do. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, let's put that away and we'll, we'll deal with that. We can stick that down now, actually, while we think about it. Are we going to do anything else at all? Get some goo. Everybody she shed. Implement. Pardon? She shed, yes. Well, um, not, not for us, but that's okay. To tell your family or your husband, go out there and watch TV and leave me in the house with all my stuff. Yeah, that's right. So they go out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There we go. I don't know how well that will stick down. It may break. It may not work. But if it does work, that's quite a nice textured piece. That's the outer casing of a moon penny. I really liked it. I'm going to have to go look up. You're going to have to take me outside for a walk around the, the garden again. <laughs> oh, well. We'll certainly have to give that a try. No. I to do that on that We'll have to put that back in its box so I don't lose it because that's something I'm always doing, misplacing it. Right. Put that away. 
over there because I'm going to get down some No, I don't like it. It's going to fall off. Hang on. I'm going to go and put it somewhere safer. So uh, I'm, I'm looking at my notes and going back what we talked about prior to the show and, and during the show about what you started out, method meaning and where we get our inspiration. Um, so many times someone will ask, well, how do you do this? Or what happens if you do that? Or what do you get if you do this? And this comes back to your answer from Mad right. What would yeah. you say? You would say, try it. Try it and let us yeah. know. That's how. I mean, it's a good idea to ask in case it turns out that there's a lot of nasty fumes that you don't want to be breathing or anything with whatever your question is. Otherwise, as long as it's safe, try it. So here are the prints I pulled from the last few. Do you want to back up? Do you want to back up the camera? Yeah, I need to back up. Is that better? Yes, thank you. You might, yeah, it's good enough. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, this is the one with the, the alien grass going up the side. Yeah. The moon. The moon, the, the crater. Sea dragons. Yeah. And the spaceships which I hear are about to be worked on. So that is good news. Yep. That's that one. This is a lovely one on black with the uh, alien grass down here. Is it node something it's called? Node point? Node magic? Something like that. That one tore, if you remember, it tore quite a bit. But no problem. It can be stuck down like that if you want it. Or tear it and use it as part of uh, some collage. You can imagine having just that piece as collage. It's going to go, what are those feet? They look like feet. <laughs> and they are feet. And then we've got the uh, sea urchins, the moon, the acemic writing, which I'm still uh, worked a bit on. I want to make them even bigger. And the lovely moon phases that comes yep. with the moon. And this is, uh, is that one of yours, Mariah, Patricia? It is, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty I can't remember sure. what it's called. I cut round it, I remember. I'm putting the link in for the shop um, okay. for anybody that needs it handy. Yeah. Um, you can see that this is more than one print. There's the other trace print underneath of the blue with the other pieces yeah because the moon is over here on that one so that's interesting to see it in multiple ways um layers and this is the really pale one taking off the last of the blue and i would um go ahead in fact i will go ahead and do some more print but I've got to do some browns first. I need some basic brown backgrounds before I do anything else. So I'm going to cut this off. So I've got a nice edge piece for making edges. Now for browns and reddish browns, I mean, I'm going to be using Nicolazo Gold. Uh, transparent red iron oxide and yellow oxide and probably a bit of Indian yellow. I might use some burnt sienna to go really brown or perhaps a bit of Van Dyke or something like that. Don't know yet. I've got a plate under here ready to go. So there we are. I think that's rather nice. We'll use that one today. This one, oh, well, we will if we ever get round to. There we are. Let's cut this off. This one I'm going to leave as is because I'm going to be able to use that in collage and so forth. We'll 
perhaps as a background print for something. I do find that I prefer slightly less, I mean, slightly less um, detailed things for backgrounds than I do for foregrounds. If something's, this is something that can be used as, parts of it can be used as a, a background, parts of it can be used as foreground. And the uh, the grass, it is called node accent. Accent. That was the word I couldn't remember. Accent. Node, node accent. accent. Yeah. Okay. The other one, I thought it was um, squares, but it's not. I don't think that's it. I know Mariah's on the road, so I... There's I'm... no squares there, are there? So it can't be squares. No, exactly. It's the other one. It's, it's node accent, absolutely. Mm -hmm. When you say it, I knew it was node something. I get excited because when I started following uh, PM Writer Studio and going to the shop, um, not so many pages of stencils. Now I've got 12 pages of stencils. I'm on a computer, so 12 pages of stencils to look through. And I'm like, it's a lot of pages, but oh, that's so cool. You need an hour, at least an hour to look through some of them. <laughs> um, wonky window net and square. All right. Is that what it is? I don't know. Yeah, Mariah said the uh, the spaceship. We should have these up soon. Yep, we know. Mm, we know. Lovely. Only I haven't used the other ones so much. I don't know what I've done with them now, because I used them all and put them aside, and then I used these ones a bit more, and and I used them a bit more. They seem to be my favorite, the shadow uh, sparrow hawk. Oh, I'm excited because I don't know if anybody else knows, but if you go to page one of the, I think it's page one of the shop, there are printable postcards, four by six, three of them per, per sheet. And the uh, the printout is, you want to know how much it costs at PMR what? Studio? Yeah, well. For the printout, for the postcards? Go on. Zero dollars. It costs zero Ooh. It's free. <laughs> You can go over there and click on it, add it to your cart, and it's a PDF file, and it's free. Uh, my problem is my printer doesn't work very well with those sort of things. Well, well, then you download the file, put it on a stick, and take it to your okay. library, and they'll print it out for you. Yeah, it's free. There's other freebies there, too. Go to, go to the blog and look at... Uh, um, Go up to more and click on our blog and, and holders. There's stuff there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm just going to put these back in because otherwise I'll start printing on them. Yeah. And they'll get colored. At the moment, they're actually viable, so I could plant them next year quite easily. Don't they say you should keep them in the fridge or somewhere so they don't dry out? Fridge or they? so well, they don't dry out over the while you're waiting to replant them. Something like that. Well, um, yeah, well, maybe. <clears throat> <laughs> now then. Okay, you move the gel plate. So move the camera to 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 uh uh. There you go. You're the that you're the man. You're the man. It's getting in the way. I had all these bits on here because I was just looking at stuff out of a box. I was going, oh, there's a box I've not looked in lately. What's in there? And basically, there was loads of stuff off a button, off a mold of a button. I liked that. And then you saw me try and put that down. That's a sun, and it's actually in the form of a necklace because it's a pendant or an earring. Oh, very nice. I did a series of suns and moons of various different types and with uh, some uh, hand-carved stamps. So that's got to go on the other one. So, um, what, uh, what, did, what did Mariah call Tuesday something? Tuesday tweaks or twicky twinkies or something? Duh. I heard it. I didn't stick. Um, oh, anyway. that cost me. For tomorrow, Tinkering. Tinkering. Said, isn't it tinkerings? Tuesday tinkerings. That could be. You say so. 
Um, but just Mariah says, we have some big announcements tomorrow. Mm. Oh. What are they plotting? Oh, I don't know, but it's always fun. Ah, absolutely. Right, I think I'm about sorted. I can actually get going. Now, I am going to reprint something on this one. And I don't want to use the same things. I don't think. So let's have a look at a big box of stencils and see what we've got in that. Yes, Kyla, please. Please, 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 please. As I keep saying, some plain browns. Tweak it. Tuesday, tweak it. Tweak it Tuesday. T not tinkering, sorry. So, I could do some of them. Do some of them. Oh, I like that. Mind you, I like that as it is quite good as a piece to put on um, something. Yeah, one of those. One of those. I like that one. Okay, Mariah's got to go get Izzy. Oh, that one's quite nice. One of the cogsiest things. As a long cox. I gotta I gotta say this. Kathy Kathy's here or she was here originally. She finally made one of our lives. And Kathy um, Kathy, Hello, Kathy. announced in my group well earlier she announced Kathy does a, a bingo game on Monday nights here on YouTube and anybody can join just if you win, she needs to know where to mail it to. But anyway, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. And I've donated to it. And I'm behind because I have some some donations for Kathy. Um, so if you've got nothing else to do later today, go look at my group and see the link for Kathy's bingo, which is fun and relaxing. Mm, don't know and what that one is. I think that was a new one. <clears throat> I like that one. I like the the lattice one is my favorite. Where are the turtles? You need some. You need some turtles, and you need some um, double hump camels. Double hump camels. I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't think there are any in this box. It must be a different box. Yeah, Paula, head over to uh, uh, the shop. Well, here. I don't want to use that. I like here, that. I make it so easy for everyone. But I suggest you go peruse the shop. There. There's the direct link to the free postcard that you can print out. Mariah did a beautiful job on them. Oh, lovely. together but that's what i'm going to use okay so i want some some blues which i've got oh pop down there oh pop full of blues i was doing blues before but i didn't get through more than about three blue colors just got stuck on them because they were so nice i don't think i'm going to use that one i quite like that Oop, I just dropped one. Ah, let's put these in a little pile over here. I can the see one. them. The loosey goosey ones. Yeah. Put that. Up there. Now then, we'll get these out so that they're available. There. So I don't want them falling down on everything. So what do they do? They fall down on everything. <sighs> I'm going to move those two and get this out of the way because I need somewhere to bray her up on.
Right. Where's my brayers come to that? There's a big one. Nice big one. Whee and I'm going to put some of these colours on. I've got some nice colours here. Some of these are old ones and some of them are new. Right, that's an old one. That's desert turquoise. But I think I've got some more of that. Tropical blues, quite nice. And that is uh, vintage brass. Don't want that. Texture medium. Don't want that. Blue harbour. That's a rather nice lilac colour. Blue Harbour. I like those two together, actually. I'm going to yeah. do those and some of these, and then I'm going to do some browns. I'm going to do these because I want them to go on that blue one I've just removed the edges of this one here. And I think that might go quite nicely on there, and that might go quite nicely on there. So we're going to do a little bit of that. But we're also going to pick it up with another sheet first. So I'll put that there ready to go. Give this a shake. So Paula says tomorrow, and I'm thinking we're talking Tweak It Tuesdays. Tomorrow is Create and Inspire. All right. Okay. Well, that's every day. Well, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. There we are. Now, where's my soft one? I did have a soft one. There it is, a big softy. Here we are. Wow. Oh, I've got a piece you of... Have something on there? There, yes. Something on your brayer? No? No, no, it was uh, on the edge. I didn't want... It was a piece of uh, pipe made out of air dry clay. Okay. Just didn't want to get it caught on it. Okay. You and I are opposite when it comes to the gel plate sizes. You're you're fantastic <laughs> on the large size and the big sheets of paper. And I get yeah. overwhelmed. I I'm more like Carrie. I like the smaller. Well, what I've seen Carrie do lately is the smaller ones with like postcard size or ATC size just yeah well they are fun to do as well I like them too but yes I am inclined to go for the bigger pieces there's a piece on there as well get that off right Not sheet well fix it Paula I'm in a I'm gonna put this link out there. Hold the phone. Just pull that wire out of my way, which is getting on my nerves. There we are. Now then put this the right way around. I'm going to use these mushroom wheels or umbrella wheels, depending on how you look at it. I'm going to put this in. If y'all feel motivated to come back later this evening or in a few hours, and I know Paula can't, to play some bingo with Kathy and others, I'm going to put this link in for you to find it. Um, go have some fun. Now, these are going to remove all the color from these areas because they are white. Yeah. Yeah. Not but used, that, right? They will be unwhite soon. Yep, yeah, that's all I'm going to do. What I really ought to do with these is put some more markings inside <clears throat> as if they were indications of veins or of struts in an umbrella, depending on which way you want to go. Oh, I got to I can show you. Um, we, we got some new neighbors, bought a house uh, two doors down from us, and we came home from... Uh, 
dinner out was it friday night yes friday night friday night fish fry we went out and we came home and these neighbors are at our door waiting for us and it was a, a lovely couple with four four children five children four boys and a girl wow um And one of them was a set of triplets. But anyway, they came over to introduce themselves and, and meet us and whatever. And she had um, brought a little bag of, um, I think, ginger snap cookies. They were delicious. But anyway, there was a leaf tied to the bag for decoration. And I jumped on that. It's not a real leaf, but I got to talk to her and find out where she got this beautiful thing from because... I can't find around here where I live really nice leaves. We have a lot of evergreens, so that's not going to work. Nope. Um, and this is perfect. If I if you put me on camera when you get a minute, I'll show everybody why I say it's perfect to use. And look at that. Right. So this is the first pool. I'm not going to use it on this one because okay. I want to get some color on the back of these pieces you see yeah so i get a better texture more interesting texture so that's one and that way i've got a nice print on there see not yep. bad not bad at all so that's yeah. that i'm going to cut that in half so i can use the next piece on the next Soak up. Right. Put that on the floor. Right. Paula says she has us propped up on her toaster and to watch us. And Carla says she's got us propped up on her patio. We're just propped up everywhere. I like those colours, though, so I'm going to use those again. I think they will work quite well on that. It wasn't that one. It was this one. Now, the question becomes, do I want the first one or the second one? Paul? Yeah. 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 Do I want this pool or the second pool? I thought you used a little too much paint there. Yes, I did. Yes. I know that. You need a, you need a piece of tissue just to do a little quickie. I like the colors, though. Yep, they're not bad, are they? No, you could actually put a... a do that blue with a, a teal. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a sort of teal, isn't it? It's a light one, but it is a teal. Yeah. Right, let's put these down again. Yeah, up by Nova Scotia, Halifax area, Diane. There's still a huge cleanup going on on our east coast from the first hurricane that hit Canada. My cousin lives in Fort Myers, um, and I contacted him. I got caught up with him, and he said that where they are and i don't know their address exactly i wouldn't give it out anyway but he said there was no damage they had no damage they were all safe so um but what damage i have seen i'm like how did his home manage to have no damage because it that hurricane really hit the other way there you go oh no the other way there you go That's what I think. And perhaps a little bit of that there. As someone, as others have said, Diane, the uh, Fort Myers is is completely, it's 
you'll not, not see it like that again as far as what it was before the storm. It's completely going to be changed. There we go. All right. That, that, that spare bit of tissue threw me out. Yeah, I think I want the traces. I want the remnants. And we'll be quite fast with this. Soak up what we can. The ones that the shop ran, are they in the shop? Huh? The, the stencil, the impression, the masks at the top, are they in the shop? Those, no. Uh, I didn't think so. No. I said I want to do a bit more work with them, put some more stuff in them, yeah. more patterning. I don't think they're quite ready. But in the meantime, I'm using the cutoffs, you know. Yeah. I mean, if people are interested, I'll work on them more urgently. <coughs> but I don't think they're quite ready. Right. Lifty poo. Okay. Right. I'm in a hurry now to get the sheet down before this dries. Dries, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not taking time to show you anything at the moment. I'm just mm -hmm. going for this. I knew that. That's the postcard. Paula, that's what they are. The um, did I not give you the correct link? Let me go back and look. Yeah, that's what they are. Four by six. You print that sheet out and then you cut them out. It's just the one side, um, the back side of the postcard. The front side you could use for, you could like collage over or use it down on a gel plate. Here we go, here we go. Now what have we got? We've got that there. Yes, I want to get that tomato in the middle of moon. That's got a ring got it. Let me have a look and see what I've got. Yes, I think that's gonna work. It certainly gives it more interest than it had, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm. Nice colors. Too. And talking about gold flakes, it's not a bad idea to sprinkle over a print in places when you're done. Yeah, I think that's all I want. Oh, you're going to get another pull off of that. I might well. Look at all that goodies that stayed down there. Yep. I like that. Still got some of the color from behind. Yep. Yep, that's good. Good, good, good. good. <clears throat> There's the moon with that tomato print inside it. Nice. Good, good. That's certainly more interesting than it was. So what were you telling me earlier is you don't like um, saying failed or... or Don't like what? You don't like it when you say, we were talking about happenstance, I think you said. Um, or or uh, failed, something that looks failed. There's always room to improve on it. it yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so if something looks as if it's broken or it's no use. Yes. Put it away <laughs> until you come across something that goes, oh, I could use that in that. Yep, revisit yep. it. Mm. Exactly. I'm getting blue paint on my cup again. <laughs> Every time I go and get another cup of tea, I've got to scrub off all the blue. <clears throat> now I'm going to head towards the browns, and I think I might head towards the browns with this one and then do a, a plain browns. When I say browns, I mean reddish browns. Because I'm thinking of the lustrous colours like 
Red Eye Oxide. Most to the one. I like that one. Might use that one as well. Tomatoes. <clears throat> These are all the blues. I'm going to put the blues away. So I've got a bit more room. And then there's the other two there. Don't want that just now. By the way, I found some borax. Oh, you did? Yep. <clears throat> I knew I had some somewhere. Right, let's put that down. This floor is getting covered. So Ian had a look at my trolley and um, put a tie wrap around it to try and stop it from splaying out on the last joint where it seems to want to, <sighs> yes, bend a bit. Yep. Now, I think this might be dry enough to do over this one. That's not quite so dry. No, that bit's not so dry. But the rest of it's pretty dry. It's only this bit here that isn't quite. So I've got that one and that one. Yellow on that side. Quinacridone Nicoloso gold. I found a, a packet of... Um, Stones as well. Mm. Nice. I do like looking at things like that. I don't use them very much in anything. I just drool over them. <laughs> Daft, don't we? <laughs> yeah, well, I am anyway. You're in the right community. <laughs> you weren't very quick to agree with me. I got to protect my own. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, Russ is listening. Ooh, yeah, dodgy. Yeah, he's right here behind me. He's playing golf again, just not the kind that you like. All right. <laughs> he, said he, he said he he wanted to get back to do the VR, but he gets motion sickness, and it it's not it, and it stays with him for hours afterwards. It just throws yeah, him off. Not so I'm yeah. I'm not too keen on him using it if that's the case. Yeah. Well, that's well, that's my problem with a lot of the VR stuff. I'm afraid, mm -hmm. which is a shame. I mean, why is it going to be like that? It, VR isn't just motion. Why can't they do things for those of us that actually like the VR without the motion? Yeah. I like to go underwater and swim around with the fish. Well, I've done that. That's about the only thing left to us, isn't it? The, no, I go back to Moss and work on that, and I do uh, Tai Chi, and I do boxing. And um, uh, there's a dance. The 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 um, these are most of everything we have are free. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I do some in the AARP section. I do some of the puzzles and games. They're nice brain uh, working your brain. Yeah. So yeah, I just haven't been in there in a couple weeks. <laughs> A bit. I love that color. Right. Oh, Paula, no, no, no fronts. Just the free um, back of the postcard. I'll have to use another sheet of white. I was looking for some rice paper. I thought I had some there. Must be on that pile over there, hidden. <clears throat> Only 28 days to Halloween. I'm not wild about Halloween. Yeah, I'm not a Halloween person. I'm not a holiday person. Let's put it that way. Um, if there were if there were youngsters in the family, if there were youngsters around me in my family, like my young grandchildren or whatever, then of course I would I would uh, participate for their benefit. But um, Russ and I alone, we don't do. If it's if it's an excuse to eat more, then we do it. <laughs> 
like make it uh, a so like oh by the way is mariah still here i if she is i don't know if she's able to talk she was going to get izzy well she doesn't need to talk i just need to tell her something i'm not going to be there tomorrow night uh well, it's night my time during the day there's yours because uh we're going out tomorrow night for our anniversary dinner it's our anniversary happy anniversary uh, and Fran. thank you So you won't be at Tuesday Tweak It. I won't be at Tuesday Tweak It. There we go. Now, I don't know whether I'm going to leave that or try and pull it now. Let's have a look and see what's on it. I think that's looking rather good. I think I might leave that. Oh, wow. And print it later. It's rather a stunning colour. But I think I need to use a bit darker, some darker browns in with um, what I'm doing. So I'll get another plate and I'll put that aside for now. I'll get another plate. I have to go. I have to move myself and go get brats out of the freezer for his dinner. Hold the phone. Okay. We will do that. So, I want to do some more browns. Let's see what other browns we've got. Now, what I could do is there's raw sienna there. I think I'd rather have something a bit darker. Hmm. What have I got in there? No, that's gold. That's no good. There's some bronze. I could add some bronze. That darkens things a little bit. Bronze. What is that? I could add some green. Green gold. I don't think that's going to help. <laughs> what have we got here? Well, I've got uh, transparent red iron oxide, light red oxide, Krakato Nicolosa gold, which I've got over there anyway. Burnt umber, that's more like it. And what's that? Burnt sienna. Was that raw sienna? Yeah. So I've got burnt sienna and I've got burnt umber. I think those are better. So I can add a little bit of that. So I'm I'm not going to use a lot of that, but I can use a little bit. And um, just, uh, I think I'll just smooth it out a bit. That's it with that one. And I'm going to smooth this out first. A bit. Okay, I'm back. Right, just a bit. And then I'm going to add Nicoloso gold. And the transparent red iron oxide, if I can figure out what I did do with it a minute ago. There it is. I pointed and you found it. <laughs> yeah, very lightly. <laughs> and some of the yellow, because I think I want a bit of a light tone in here as well. So transparent yellow iron oxide. I've probably got too much paint on here now. That's enough. Now. Now, I'm not bothered about the pattern underneath because there isn't one. So I'm mixing these in a bit. Mm. 
That's a good color for bugs. Yeah. Well, I just want a background. Mm -hmm. You see? Yep. So I've been trying to get a decent background, and I keep getting too too good a print for a background. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you don't want to mess it up. No, not as much as that. Yeah, you get a print, and then you think, oh, I like that too much to use it for what I wanted to use it for. Yep, that's better. Now, I think what I want to do with this is take some of it off first. So I'm going to use this small piece of tissue and just lift some here and there. Just to create a randomy pattern. I don't want anything too deliberate, but I don't want edges to show either. Yeah. There we go. So I've got a, an absolute rubbishy thing there, but it means I can now put a piece of card paper down and see what I can pull deliberately that I might want. Now, those edges are still showing, so let's use another piece of tissue to pull those up because I don't want to get them on my clothes. Yeah, that bottom piece is even off camera. You're just a tad off camera. There you go. Just pulling up what I can off this. Mm -hmm. I clean the plate, really, with the edge. Ditto with it the other side. Let's say some at the top too. Yeah. Hi, Carrie. Welcome, welcome. I'm making a randomized background, not using stencils. So I've just lifted a load with a piece of tissue, and it's left me with this, which is much more what I was hoping for. And it's a nice little so I'm just using a piece of tissue repeatedly over the surface to pull up some of the paint. And that's given me that now with this piece of white card, um, not card, thickish paper. paper it's not yeah. card, it's just... My Slightly favorite thick. time of year is autumn, and that's what I'm thinking of looking at that, autumn leaves. Yeah, oh, that's an autumn background, isn't it? You can put leaves on there, no problem. And if you've got some leaf stencils, you could create yourself some collage pieces like that by simply putting them onto a plate and getting some ink on them. Yeah. And um, yeah. use um, some uh, – use a uh, GAC 100 or uh, – what's the other one? Uh, liquid, no, it's liquid glazing. There's another one I've got somewhere that I was using the other day. Terry uh, says medium. it was the medium, wasn't it? Using the medium, yes, the heavy duty gel medium, yes, super heavy duty. No, yeah. it wasn't the heavy duty gel medium, no, no, it was the thin one. That you can put in with paints to um, oh, add okay. a length and it's sort of not 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 a flow improver, but it does a bit of that. But it's also good for mixing paints and it creates more cells. It allows the paint that is a bit thicker to create yeah. cells. If you remember, we were doing it the other day, and I can't yeah, remember, I remember. The name something something medium something something probably at the top of this somewhere. High flow medium, that's what it was. High flow medium. Thins and extends credit colours. That's the one that helps you get bubbling and selling and beading. Yeah. So let's see if we can pull that one if it's ready. 
Oh, it is. Look at that. Isn't we getting a lovely print? Look at that. Oh, nice. Oh, lovely. Now I'm going to try the same thing, doing it again. And we've got a little bit of selling here because that this one, these are um, high uh, fluid acrylics, but uh, because they're the transparent ones, they do, they are inclined to give you more selling than you would get with others because they're slightly, they're the transparent ones, I think. Maybe that's the reason. But they are very transparent because the, the box is completely open. Carrie so let's go again. Carrie says he sees caramel and Paula says marmalade. Yes. Doesn't it look like chunks of marmalade? <laughs> mm. Lovely. So let's try that again. So we did. Uh, Where's the other one? Hello. Oh, you, oh, maybe it was that one. No, there it is. It was this one. It was burnt umber, the little one. I used a bit of burnt umber. Not a lot. I just allowed some of it to. I'm not putting a lot on here, and it's quite thick. So I'm going to add some some of the medium to that. Right. And then I'm going to add some of the transparent red iron oxide uh, after I've mixed this in a bit. Because that's a um, Galeria acrylic, that one. It's quite thickish, as you can see from this. So red iron oxide. yellow to lighten so i can see selling happening anyway underneath from the high flow medium and i'm going to add a little bit more just all over that's enough just to mix in with the rest of it is quite liquidy now <laughs> but I'm going to take uh, some off with the tissue don't forget and I'm liking what I'm getting with the tissue as well so right let's pull with that one I'm not letting it rest there very long. And I'm going to go over it again. Because there's quite a lot of paint on there. I think that's quite good. I'm going to leave that for a few moments. See if it sells up a bit, which it is doing. It is doing. And then I'll get another sheet of that same paper. Got quite a bit of selling on there now. Some nice areas. So I think I think I might just wait a little bit longer. I could do with adding more of the uh, high flow medium to the burnt umber. I think next time, so I don't get so much splodges. I mean, I quite like them on here. They're they're delicate. They're not too oppressive but i think i would add more to that so let's have a go let's have this piece again and we'll pull up the excess
got a bit on my lamp there as well. Well, you're in a tighter area. so. Well, actually, I've got a little bit more freedom than I had before because I've got a bigger brayering off area, although I do manage to fill it up quite well with other things that get in the way. I was going to say, give it time. You'll, you'll fill it up. <laughs> yeah, Have it, done. Yeah. It, it's only because it, it's temporary. It's Well, it's long-term temporary. Yeah, I'm afraid so. What do you got there? Very nice. Not bad. Not bad at all, is it? Rather pleasant. I might do similar with some uh, of the bronze, if I can find it. And maybe a little bit more green to help the pattern I feel. Hello, are you there, bronze? No, it's not there. I wonder where I put my bronze. It might be over here. I've got the fine gold there. I don't know. For some reason, I keep. I have to keep checking. It keeps. Knocks me off the line. There it is. Hmm. Okay. I can add some of the high flow to that as well. Found it. I need a green. Well, I've got green gold. I can add some of that. That's already high flow. Phew. Yes, I think I might do that. I wonder how that other sheet is done yet. We can then reclaim that plate. The one you were going to let set? Yeah, well, it's been sitting a while. We'll see. Oh, 10 minutes. Has it only been 10 minutes? 10, 15 minutes, maybe. Oh, we can use the plate. Oh, oh, wow. Bad. Those lovely colors. Not bad at all. Oh, I like that. Oh, wow, they're nice. Move that plate out of the way and lay that sheet down for us to see. I will. I will. It's coming. Nice. Oh. That's nice. I'm very nice. Do you remember what colors you used there? Yeah, I use the uh, <coughs> Blue Harbor, <coughs> I think. Well, the first layer was a mix of leftovers. Yes, of those yeah. two. And then the pool layer was the red iron oxide and yellow, yellow iron oxide. burnt umber. And the gold. Oh, I thought you put umber down. Not on this one, I didn't. No, I hadn't found it then. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. Good job. <clears throat> so let's put this aside for a little while. I'll just have a look and see. No, I think it's all right. I think we can just pull it. Hi, Julie. Must be getting ready to go to work. <coughs> there we are. Pretty good. Love your colors today. Really nice colors i'm getting what i wanted now good this is what i wanted for backgrounds <coughs> exactly what i wanted <coughs> oh no work for julie today yay oh that's good yeah i like that you could even put a little bit of the um there's a bit of blue in there a bit of blue harbor or something and it would give you a gray, wouldn't it? Do that. So let's have a go. So <clears throat> I want to use a bit of this.
Paula, uh, has, bit of Paula has a question. Golden airbrush medium. Anyone tried this regarding selling? Well, we can have a go. I've got Liquitex airbrush medium. <clears throat> I haven't got the golden airbrush medium. And Carla said, I'm the one previous. She said, ooh, lovely. Photograph it, Fran. <laughs> yeah. I do like that. Okay. Now, now Nicolay's, uh, I don't know, cast out red eye, huh? And a little bit of the yellow, <clears throat> yellow iron oxide. Lots of paint there. Wow. Yes, I know. I'm going to put more on in a minute. Don't tell me off. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get a few pulls. Probably. <clears throat> high flow medium. I just want to put some high flow medium with it. Oh, wow. Yes, if so, if you want to know, don't go research. Just do it. Here's an example. Just do it. What will it look like if I put all this on there? I don't know. Do it, and we'll see. Well, we'll try the airbrush medium in a minute. <clears throat> it's very liquidy, though, so you've got to be careful. It runs like water. water. Starting to sell up already. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's what she's what I'm leaning towards. Julie says, Oh, autumn. Yes, my favorite time of year. And you're making colors that just are I'm loving it. And I see yep. selling there. I see some selling. Yep. Well, I'm going to um, cut a piece off one of these so that I've got something to pull bits up with. Large, <laughs> quite large cells. Good. In fact, if you don't hurry up, you're not going to have any paint left. It's all going to sell off. <laughs> I'll give you that. Yeah. I'm so I've got to some cool with. Yeah, that's enough, I think. And we've got quite a nice piece there as well. <clears throat> paper, paper. Okay, Carla, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. She had to go. Her phone was dying. Oh, okay. Bye, Carla. Yeah, we've got a fair bit off there. Mm, nice. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the other side and see what we've got happening. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So we've got a fair bit of selling there. Some of it encouraged by the lifting of uh, with the tissue, yeah. lifting of the paper with the tissue. So that's given a bit more. Yes, that's interesting. Sort of thing I might then spray with something. I don't know. I might not. I'll put that down for a moment and we'll have a go with the other plate that I freed up. And we'll try the same colors, but with the airbrush medium, okay? And throw, so, a, throw some of that blue or, or violet combo in there if you can. Just a tad bit, not a lot. Just Or, or do it on a second pole, maybe. That would be better. Hmm, I don't know. The blue harbor then, okay. I like, I like that first print you got that you let set, and then you came back and pulled it. That is so cool. Just in some areas. So we won't put it everywhere. <clears throat> Just put it in some areas. And then I want the 
transparent red iron oxide. And Carrie has a comment. I'm yeah, I'm loving this because these are like autumn colors, perfect for this time of year. Halloween, autumn. Um, and Carrie says very Halloween. I can see darker images over that. Yeah, there's so many things you could do with them. Yeah. <clears throat> right, so let's add some of this airbrush medium. Now, this is like water, as I said, so careful. Careful. So want to put it on. You don't Just shake some... it before you? No. Okay. You might be too, but I don't. I mean, it's so like water, There's there's nothing to come out. Okay. Okay. Hairbrush medium, let's see what happens. <clears throat> oh, wow, look at that color. Wow. All right. Get some Build that in a bit more. A lot of paint. Yep, lots and lots of paint. So, <clears throat> oh, you're great. My texture. Oh, this is so cool. It's that piece. Uh, I might get a bit more as well. I don't know. I have to cut a piece off another one. Look at that. Oh, man. Wow. I'm going to cut this piece off here. Lots the blue, though. I would have liked to see. Yeah, it is dark. Well, you know, we're not on the other side yet. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. And it is a thicker paint, don't forget. So yeah. we can't see for sure just yet. But holy cow, look at the selling going on. Oh, I don't need to use that. Look at the lovely selling. Yes, indeed. Oh. <laughs> is he getting another piece of... Uh, Tissue for it, and I didn't need it. It's like DNA going rampant. Yeah. Lovely. I was going to say something else, but I think I'll put the DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Just use this for the edges. Oh. Will we leave this sit? What do you think? Yeah. Now then, let's have a look at the other side, see what we've got. Are we going to show up? Yes. <gasps> the blue is still there as blue. I'm going to take this up right, right now. <sighs> yeah. The blue needs more of the... Uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Airbrush medium. But the airbrush medium obviously works. Yeah. So we've got something here. Let me use up this that's on the brayer. And I'm going to move that in and that one. I'm going to put some high flow there. To mix in a bit. Some high flow improver? High flow medium. No, not prover, improver. I don't have high flow improver. Oh, high flow medium it is. Okay. Just to still, turn it into a grey. Still all that selling going on. Yep. Oh. Give it a second oh. so I can do some more selling. Yeah. Going to, go to. Oh, look at that. That's okay. cool. <laughs> Let's have a go now. So does the dad answer your question, Paula? Well, there you are, Paula. So, yeah, I think it works. 
Now this is with the high flow. The other one was with the airbrush medium. Hi, Trish. Welcome, welcome. Oh, we're usually off by now, so yeah. Glad to see you. What do you think? I think it's lovely. Look at that. So you've got a bit more grey out of the grey now, out of the blue. But I think mixing uh, that blue with some of the transparent red iron oxide might be a good idea. It's certainly got a lot of shine on there from the bronze. It makes me think of when you lay it. I don't know if you've ever done it, but you lay in the, the grass and you look up through the trees and you can see sunlight between the leaves. Yes, it does give that feeling, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. What did I just say? I said Blue Harbor. Hi, Evie. So Julie has a question. She says, I have flow medium. Will that make opaque paint transparent? It will thin it. Flow medium. This is high flow medium. And it will um, make it less likely to dry so fast so i'm going to add some let's use the high flow again so i'm going I to add it directly to this there you go so i would say if you want to use it to make paint from opaque to transparent not so much well the more you thin it out you'd have to have a, a, add a lot of it wouldn't you yeah so a little bit of color to a fair bit of that it would be more transparent yeah but how transparent i haven't tried so you, you'll have to try that let us know what happens yeah and diane says anytime you make a paint very thin it will start to separate yeah this is what we want yeah on this on my stuff anyway i do light-handed with the paint wow look at that what was what that is, is that is that umber <laughs> That's the burnt umber? Or no, that's or the transparent or... yellow iron oxide. It's getting a bit gloopy. I think I'm near the end of that bottle. I'll have to go into a new bottle soon. Okay. okay. And green? green? Yep. Green gold. No bronze this time. No bronze. Paula no says bronze. she's in her pants. Well, woman, fix that. <laughs> Is that because she's enjoying herself or, or think, for some other reason? <laughs> I think I think that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. You <laughs> <laughs> should, it Julie. Up. Julie said she's thinking of making honey beehive gel prints. Go for it. Go for mm. it. Stop thinking and do it. Just do it. So I've run out of um, bits of scrappy tissue. Yeah, run out of bits of scrappy tissue. So I'm going to have to. No, you haven't. Just take it where you have and turn it over to the other side. Or get some plastic wrap. Uh, I've got a big sheet. I hope you get to try it today too, Julie. If you don't have to go to work today, then you should be allowed to just play all day. So I'm going to go over it again because I want to get rid of the blueness here and I want to meld it in some more. No, now don't. I'll put a bronze on, I think. Now I see the blues, yes. Mine. Yeah, I want to get rid of the blues because I want to turn them into greys. Okay, if you say so. Yeah, yeah that was the point of them. Not doing very well. We're getting rid of that one. It's quite. It's. Uh, I think what you need to do, if you want to use that with these thinner paints, you need to put it into a, an old bottle that you're not using, and add the high flow medium to it in the bottle, and then pull some out. You know, like you would if it was ready made like that. Yeah. 
because otherwise it's just too thick. It's not mixing properly. You need to use a vortex and mix it up. And yeah, because this is a really rather solid paint, I think. Blue Harbour. It's just acrylic paint, so it's you. Know, it's good coverage, but that's not quite what I was hoping for in this particular instant, is it? Well, Evie says it. I love those colors. That's what Evie says, and I agree. Everybody, we're all loving your colors, so. Oh, Keep good. Going. Thank you. Keep going. Let, let me have a go with this one. There's not so much color on this one. Well, there's only one color. There you go. Yeah. Get some design on there. So let's use another sheet. You bump the camera again. Did I? Oh, I'm sorry. Just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Yeah. You, the bump the camera. Okay. I'm excited. What's up? All I've got left are these little bits. This is another way of using up your edges. And I think I am winding down now because I'm yep. getting rather tired. Yep, and I've got to go get our dinner going. One to pull. Colors. So I'll pull this one. That's rather nice. I like that. That's got some shine to it with the bronze. Thane. Bronze Thane. Good and bronze Thane. Very nice. So that's that one that was waiting. That leaves me with only one waiting, and that's this one. Yeah. So I've got some rather nice backgrounds. So I wanted these for, I don't know whether it's this time of year or or what, but I like those colours. And I like the little accents of the blue. A pity they didn't go to brown, but I still quite like them. So they're not terrible. Are we ready? Yeah, I think we can pull this one as well. Are you seeing a change of colors outside in your garden? Not really, not quite, not yet. Not quite. Still a little, either. Little, little bit of warmth, but that's oh, a good one, isn't it? I like it. Isn't that, that lovely? Like yes. We've got creases, we've got bubbles, we've got, oh, little curves and things, and we've got gradations of density of color. We've got dark, we've got light of the same color. And I think that's rather good. That's that's pretty nice. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm glad I did that after all. I was wondering whether I should stop, but I think I should stop now on a roll. Well, <laughs> Anne, says, Anne says, thank you for a lovely afternoon. Susan says, thank you so much, Fran and Violet. And thank you all. Thank you all. Um, you are very welcome, everybody. Yeah. And I'm glad you popped around and... Watch what I was up to and put up with all the waffle at the beginning. <laughs> Sorry okay. about that. Carrie, Carrie says okay. the harvest is in full autumn at present. I was going to tell Carrie, I was, I was telling you, I'm reading a book by Elizabeth Gouge, and it, um, the setting is at the castle in Wales. Um, it's called The Child from the Sea. More to your right. More to your right. That's better. Sorry, more alive. Well, yeah, sorry. Yep, good. But yeah, I was telling you about it. Um, and I know Carrie's in Wales. It's it was about the uh Duke of Mon. How do you how do you say it? Monmouth, 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 yeah, Monmouth. And the first Duke of Monmouth, um, so far, I, I mean, what happens, it takes me a while to read it because. I have to keep stopping and looking things up. And this is where I read about the Ty Tylewith, 
tag. I think I said that correctly, Taoist tag. And I immediately had to go look it up. Um, it would be the, I want to say R-O-C-H-E castle, Carrie. R-O-C-H-E. So I wasn't Roche sure. Castle? I didn't want Roche. to. I think it's Roche. Roche, Roche. Roche. But Roche. It, it's about I the think. first. No, that's a bit. The other thing you said, I recommend that you type that into Google and uh, put pronunciation after it, and it should give you a proper pronunciation. Yeah. That yeah. I'm not sure about. I am. What I have done is I have to keep stopping because I, I had to go bring up the Google Maps and go there on the map to see where it is because it's it talks yes. about how it looks over that castle looks over the St. David Cathedral, the St. David Church. Yes. So uh -huh, right. traveling, obviously I'm not seeing it the way it was. This is done in 16, in the 16, mid 1600s. So I'm not seeing it the way it was then, but it's still pretty cool. And like I said, I, I came across Tyler with Teg and I had to look that up. That's like so amazing fairies about fairies. Um, yeah. So I get lost. I, I, I go down a rabbit hole. I'm, I have, I should have had more than this read already, except I keep stopping to look things up. Oh, and the other thing was earlier we mentioned, I mentioned my neighbor brought me cookies and a leaf. Yeah. And here's the leaf. And look at the veins on it. That's lovely. Wouldn't this be terrific for a, 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 a stencil or a mask rather? Yeah, it would. And it's made out of, I want to say it's a vinyl or faux leather, so it's going to hold up well. Yes. And there's a, a yes. cloth type thing on the back. Yeah, I have to get in touch with her and find out um, where yep. she got I can, I can say some things in Welsh, Evie, but not many. <coughs> like the Vale of Glamorgan <laughs> is where the family's from. And um Gwaisanethau. Say that again. <coughs> Gwaisanethau. I wonder if Kerry knows what it is. He, he ought to, if he's driven anywhere. I bet I'm not saying it right. Best thing to say is Cumri and Bith. The best thing to do is go, go, go Google, pronounce it, and go by that. Wow, that's yeah. Guaisa means services. <laughs> <laughs> you learn that. Um, I'm over the bridge in Wales. <laughs> Carrie says, good job, Fran. And he says, I was born in Wales, but raised in New Zealand until I was about nine. Then when I moved back to Wales, I missed Welsh schooling. Uh-huh. Oh. So there we are. Right. Well, it is said in the family, mind you, this is said in a lot of Welsh families, so this may be just as wrong as anybody's. But it is said in our family that we are related to Iolo Morganog. I um, can't remember. Is it, is it Williams? Edward Williams? Can't remember. I don't think it's Edward. Yeah. He's the uh, poet, the uh, Welsh poet that helped to uh, start up the Ice Steadford. Wow. So it is said. Come on. <clears throat> Iolo Morganog. I O L O Morganog. Means from Glamorgan. Hit Russ says, say that fast three times. Iolo Morganog, Iolo Morganog, Iolo Morganog. <laughs> you just <just> show off. <laughs> right, well, we will have to say goodbye. Yes. Because uh, I've got to go and make myself a new cup of tea and sit down and relax me back a bit. <clears throat> yep. And you tell, 
be sure we'll to see tell him how much I appreciate him dressing up for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love oh. that. It made my day. You may now explain that to everybody else. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Leave it like that. You had to be Bye there. bye, everybody. Bye bye, everybody. Here we go. Bye. Bye. Bye.